Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I believe that every single one of us can relate to a challenge in our life. But I do want to make something very clear today. Um, the pursuit of true happiness is honestly, it's the result of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Like if you're ever going to truly experience happiness, because I, I know that most of us in this room, we all want to be happy in our careers. We all want to be happy in, in what we do in this life because uh, if you're going to invest in something, it better matter, right? And so as, as we see the different clips, um, I want us to understand some principles today. So I just want to make that clear. Happiness, true happiness is the result of the living a Christ life. But I want to take you to a foundational verse today. And I want to talk to you about what was it about this guy that, that people wanted to hear his story. In Proverbs 10, 4, it says this. It says, lazy hands make for poverty. No one likes to talk about that in church. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent. Everybody say diligent. Diligent. Man, how difficult it is to find diligent people nowadays. It is hard to find diligent workers today in society. But diligent hands brings wealth. Let me tell you something. Notice that God didn't say um, skilled people. He didn't say talented people. He didn't say gifted people. He said diligent hands. That means that you and I have to have the, the ethic of hard work. We have to be attentive. We have to be aggressive. If you want to do something in this life, you can't just sit back and think that God's just going to drop it on your lap. Many people want the blessing of God, but not everyone wants the process. Yeah. The process will always precede the blessing. you got to know that right now. Yeah. And once you understand that the process will always precede the blessing, you'll realize that that life is going to, you know, give you a whole bunch of pain and hurt and, and some suffering. But but you got to have some diligence. Uh, let, let me start with you, Pastor Tim, because our first point, we have some ni we have nine points for you guys today. Um, in this clip, we, we brought out a statement that we kind of just kind of turned it around. But everyone needs to have a why not me moment. Everyone needs to have that moment. And uh, let's start with you, Pastor Tim. What, what does that look like? Uh, why not me? Uh, obviously, he's struggling throughout the movie, uh, trying to be a salesman, and he looks at some people that he believes, that's where I want to be. Mm. And all of a sudden, he gets this epiphany, well, why couldn't I be them? Why not me? Mm. And I believe God gives us dreams to download a why not me moment in every believer. That's awesome. Right? If you can get the why not me from God, if God bursts a dream in you, uh, then you can believe for significance. I believe happiness in the world is so transient yeah. that we just chase it like a carrot on a stick, yeah. right? But as believers, if we believe God wants us to give us a significant life, even if we do one great thing that changes the lives of other people yeah. and go home to be with Jesus, at least we were significant. Yeah. Come on. So yeah. I believe that significance, uh, the desire for significance, uh, kind of pulls us into the dream. Amen. Amen. That's really good. How about yeah. you? Yeah. You know, when I think of, uh, of Chris here and I think about uh, him having this why not me moment, uh, it, it's a lot like David. You know, David uh, in the Bible had a why not me moment. He had a moment where his, his eyes were like, listen, if no one here is going to stand up against this Goliath, why not me? Yeah. I fought a bear. I fought a lion. I, I, I've been outcasted. I, I've done all of that, but I am here to do something. So why not me? And I think that the moment that David began to have that moment, he realized that I don't need Saul's armor. I don't need the, the strength of these soldiers. All I need is to know that I'm capable, that God is with me. And that if, if this is just the one thing that I'm good at, I'll do it. Yeah. And I'll use this to defend my God. And, and, and you know what? Something that I got out of that too is this, is that, you know what? Before uh, David was a giant killer, he first had to learn how to slay the bear and the lion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what does that say to us? You know what? God will never, everybody say never. Never. He will never allow anything that you have done in life, whether it's job, a career, uh, whether it was a horrible experience in life, mm -hmm. uh, me dealing with cancer, 
God will never, ever waste anything you go through. God Amen. will use it all. So don't ever be depressed like, dang, I got this sucky job. Well, maybe that sucky job needs to build you some character. Huh? Oh, that was a good amen right there. That was, that was your moment. You guys missed it. No, it's too late now. Too late. Too late. You missed it. You're eating popcorn. You're eating popcorn. Yeah, yeah. That's what happened. It's the butter. It's the butter, man. I'm trying to butter you guys up. You ain't listening. No, point number two. Point number two. Point number two is this. I love this. The little boy started doing what? Made a list. Ever say make a list. Make a list. Habakkuk 2.2 says this. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Ever say write. Right. And there's something powerful. Listen, I love technology, okay? We are a very tech-driven church. But there's something powerful about a journal, about a piece of paper and a pen. There's something that happens between, scientifically, between the finger and the pen and your brain. And so God says, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. And I think that is probably something that is so crucial that so many people, they they have dreams but do nothing with them. Talk to me a little bit about that. I I, I had spoken uh, at the 8th that I believe that when we write something down, it actually activates something in the spirit. Mm. And I know a lot of us struggle with, well, I'm not really sure, you know, what I'm called to do. I'm not really sure what my dream is. And I've had some experiences where I would be reading the word and I would just get a verse that I think I want to remember that. And I would begin to write it down. The next thing I know, I'd written four pages of things, of revelation and downloads from God just because I started writing. So if Habakkuk 2.2 says, write the vision, make it plain, you can't use the excuse, but I don't have a vision. Just write down a verse. Start writing and watch God grab on to your pen. Very good. Come on. I like that. Watch God grab on to your pen. Man, that's a quote right there, man. Yo We're going to take that. Your pen. Yo yeah, pen. yeah. How about yeah, you, Pastor? Yeah, I mean, let, let's take the Bible. The, the Bible is simply the written word of God. God spoke, but he valued his word so much that he had people write it down. So if God could value his spoken word to the point where, you know, I, I think I should write this down. Well, why shouldn't we? You see, when God wrote down the spoken word, when, when, when uh, the people of God wrote the Bible, it now became something that we can see in plain sight, and we can pick it up, and now today we can run with it. Now we can take the Bible, we can do something with it. So it did activate something in us. It activated something in the people of God. Now we have something tangible that's clear to read, that's clear to understand, and it's not just hearsay. It's not just he said it, she said it, but listen, this is what God says. This is in the Bible. Yeah, and when you write when you write something from God that sounds just like just crazy. Like when God said we we're going to pastor a church, I'm like, there's just no way. That's just that's impossible. But what's impossible with you is possible with God. Listen, if it's in your strength to do it, that's not God. Amen. If it's in your wisdom to do it, it's not of God. That's something you can do. Go do that. But when God gives you something, it'll always be bigger than you. It'll, it'll have a huge price tag, okay, that you can't afford. But, but let me tell you something. But when you begin to write it, you can't, you can't start saying, I don't have money to do that. Let me tell you something. Vision comes first before money. Money follows vision. Mm, that's good. Here's, let me put, let's put a quote up on the screen. Look at this. A dream is just a dream until you write it down. Then it's a goal. A dream is just a dream. And we got a lot of daydreamers, don't we? Yeah. Got a lot of daydreamers in today's society. Okay, let me give you point number three. Point number three. The pursuit and activation plan. That was big because this guy, he wanted an end result, right? He's standing there at Wall Street and he's looking up and he says, why can't I have that? So let's talk about that. The pursuit and the activation plan. Here's what Deuteronomy 28.8 says. It says, the Lord will send a blessing. Who's going to send it to you? The Lord. So don't say, I don't have a dream. The only reason you don't have a dream is because you haven't gone to the one who is the dream maker. All right, so the Lord will send a a dream on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. You've got to put your hand to something. And he says, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. So that tells me that God has a plan for me. Talk to me about that. 
like that, that just hit my spirit right there. I didn't talk about it before, but in the land that he has given you, that, in other words, the, la- the promised land is your dream, mm. right? Yeah. And so if, he, if he's given you a dream, he's giving you power to possess your dream. Come on. Right? That's right. Even though you might be like the spies that didn't see it, Caleb saw it. Yeah. Right? We can do this. They're bread for us. Let's go mm, for it. That's right? good. Wait a minute. You said something good. Caleb and Joshua were able to see it, but everyone else. No one else can see it. That's, that's key, man. Not everyone is going to see what you see. You know, if God anoints us to possess our dream, uh, every time we see in the scriptures, our hands are anointed. Right? So yeah. if we don't put our hands to the dream, how are we going to release the anointing? Come on. Right? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, did you have something? Or yeah, yeah. You know, um, when we think of the word pursuit, I, I think uh, we can look at it as you're just, you're, you're on the pursuit, right? You're running, you're, you're going. And, and, and we can confuse the fact that pursuit implies that there's an end goal. Yeah. When you're in pursuit of something, you're going to, to, to reach a place of completion. Chris was in pursuit of having an end goal of being happy. Point blank period. So we have pursuit, but I think we put so much attention on the running, on the running, that you get so lost, and you're like, man, I'm just running aimlessly. But no, when you think of pursuit, you're, you're reaching an end goal. You're pursuing something till it's finished. God said he will complete what he started. He will pursue you. He will finish what he started in you. you got to have a plan, guys. You have to have a plan. When you don't have a plan, your marriage will fail. Your children are jacked up. Your finances will be messed up. Listen, there is this cuss word in the church. Let me tell you what it's called. Budget. <laughs> oh, I know that will preach real good right there. I mean, we can do a whole series on budget. We have Financial Peace University that we do here at the church. We teach people how to create budgets, how to get out of debt. And let me tell you something. I'm going to stand up. This gets me angry. We have people from other churches that come to Elevate Church to take what we offer and our own church people don't show up. Have you ever been in that place in life where where just, it just, man, the trials are faithful. It's kind of like your bills. The bills are faithful every month, aren't they? They show up on time, right? And, uh, and as I was thinking about this, uh, we, were, we were talking amongst ourselves and said, you know what? What does this say about, about this man? What, what does it say about his character? And you know what it says? Point number four is resilience trumps trials. You have to have a resilient spirit. But that only comes from God. There's only so much you can do in your own natural strength. But with God, you can overcome so much more. Jesus said this, and this is what overcomes the world, your faith. And so talk to me about this, Pastor Anthony. Resilience trumps trials. What does that say to you in this film? Yeah, you know, I'm reminded um, when I think of someone who really demonstrates resilience aside from Chris in this film, uh, I think about Joseph, you know, in the Bible. And, um, man, talk about trial after trial. The man was was falsely accused. Mm-hmm. He was lied to. He was betrayed. He was even forgotten. And so uh, you think about his resilience. Well, he had to hold on to this God-given dream for yes. dear life, literally for dear life. Literally. He had to hold on to this God-given dream. And so when I think about resilience, we, we think – we think uh, you got to be tough, man. Joseph was an innocent child when this started to him. When yeah. he started, he was journey. a teenager. Teenager, he was innocent, and, and he and there was nothing tough about him. But the only, but what what demonstrated uh, him to be able to get through these trials was the fact that he said, "I'm not letting go." That's resilience. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. God has given me this dream. I won't quit until I see this happen. And that was that was the character of Joseph. He had a resilience. And and all along the way. He was promoted. Constantly. Constantly yeah. promoted. Yeah. So don't don't think that just because there's a delay, that doesn't mean that you're denied. It's just a part of the process of, of what God's doing in your heart. How about you, Pastor Tim, quickly? You know, I was thinking that uh, we were talking about how to overcome adversity. But I think adversity shapes our destiny. Mm. I don't think That's that Chris good. would have qualified for the job had he not gone through the adversity. Yes. Because it turned him into the kind of man that company needed. Yes. You know. I so if we that. can look at adversity as our friend and not our enemy, we'll have resilience. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> your new BFF is your adversity. Yeah. Come on. The next time someone says, you have a friend, you have a really great friend. It's called adversity. <laughs> yeah. I'd like you to meet him. Uh, yeah, I'd like you. <laughs> would you like to meet him? Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me tell you something what I enjoyed about this, this too, guys, is, and we didn't say this at the first uh, service, you guys get it, but uh, 
I, I love how he gets arrested, right? He's, 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 he's in the room. He, he looks like a mess. But, but he could have made up all kinds of excuses like most Christians, right? <laughs> uh, excuses is the babysitter of the underachiever. Never forget that. <laughs> and, uh, and so he said, but let me just tell you the truth. If Christians can just be truthful, here's what happens. I believe that because of his confidence, he had competence. And the reason most people don't get further in their company in life is because you have no confidence. And if you're not confident in what you do, you'll never be competent to get the job done. The only reason this guy got hired as, a, not even hired, brought in as an intern, free 99, was because he had competence. But they saw first the confidence, and then it gave birth to so many amazing things. Point number five is protect the dream. Mm -hmm. protect, how do you protect the dream, man? You know, I see something new every time we watch these clips. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that I saw in here is, you know, he, he felt unsure of himself, but when he walks into the room and the trading's going on, he just, he like breathes it. He goes electric, yeah. right? And he's like, you can almost feel like he's thinking, I'm born for this. Yeah. Right? Something about that trading room set him off. And once he, you know, it's like a shark. Once you smell the blood, you know, the Bible says that Jesus, he said, I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened until it be fulfilled? Yeah. He said he set his face like Flynn. He knew what he wanted and he was willing to do whatever he needed to do to get there. I love that. Listen, guys, this is good because um, one thing that he said to them, he says, I can tell you this, I'm good with numbers and I'm good with people. Find out what you're good at. Yeah. Most of us don't even know what we're good at. We're just doing whatever we can get just to have security. Find out what you are good at and be great at that. Amen. Final thoughts. Yeah, when I look at that moment um, when Chris is having with his son and he's telling his son, you know, don't let anyone tell you you can't, not even myself. You know, I, I remember there was a time when I was um, probably seven, eight years old and we had visited a church and I, and I was immediately drawn to the drummer. Uh, I was immediately drawn. I was like, man, I remember looking to my dad and saying, man, one day I'm going to be in a church and one day I'm going to play drums for the church. And I even met the drummer and everything. And, you know, that, that was great. That was my dream. That was the, the implanted dream in my life. But along the way, I, I was surrounded by constant naysayers. I was surrounded by constant reminders. This is your environment. This is who your family was. This is what. You, this is the path you're on. This is how you're failing, right? Because a lot yeah. of times we get reminded of our failures. Sure. And we hold on to the failures more than we do of the promise yeah. where we do of the dream. And so I, I'm reminded of this. And all throughout the years as a teenager, I'm just, I, I lose sight completely. I completely lose interest, completely lose desire until, until I come to a place where now I have people who are willing to protect the dream for me with me, Amen. alongside of me. People were able to speak into my life and encourage me. Next thing you know, I find myself uh, placed behind a drum cage playing the drums at a church. And I look and I'm like, wow. And it reminded me at that moment, that, was, that dream isn't a new dream. This was the dream that God had given me. I just didn't have the right people to help me protect it. Uh, especially if you're a parent, listen, your job is to protect your children's dreams. Uh, they are constantly being faced with the challenge to surrender yeah. that dream. Yeah. Constantly. They, they don't know. All they know is that they're excited. They can't wait because they have this instinct to do something great. But if you're not helping them protect it, they won't know how to protect it themselves. That's and right. that's crucial as, as we raise our kids. That's right. Guys, it is so crucial and key to have the right people in your life. Mm -hmm. it, it, listen, I have, I have no problem with having people that are like me. But if I just hang with people that are like me, then I'm never going to go to the next level. So I have to find people that I want to be like. I got to find mentors. I got to find people that I can draw from. I have to get with people that I can get encouragement from, empowerment from, but also some 411. So you don't have to call 911 later, amen? You got to got to get some information, man. Information is so key for the next step, the next level that you want to go into. Point number six, do more with less. Do more with less. It's so amazing how many people in today's culture will not even move a thumb unless it's 
everything has to work together. For example, I hear people, and I ain't going to, you know, look at anyone here, but I've seen people, <laughs> I've heard people come to me and say, Pastor, I, I, man, I went for that interview you prayed with me about, and, and uh, I got the job, but I'm like, but what, bro? Uh, yeah, but you know what? Um, yeah, it's too far. Okay, come, come again. <laughs> okay, you believe God? Yeah, but my car broke down. and I, Man, take the BUS bus. Get on a bicycle. I don't care what it takes, but you need to start doing more with less. You have more innovation when you have less. When you have more, you get lazy. When you have less, you become creative. And be creative with God. Here's what Jesus did. Look, he always did more with less. He feeds 5,000 people, right? Remember that story, Mark 6, 38? And the disciples didn't know how to take care of the situation. And Jesus says, good Lord, what's it? What do you have? Uh, we have nothing. Go see what you have. Go see. They come back to our, we got, we got five loaves, two fish. Bring them to me. And the sp scripture says that Jesus looked up to God the Father and he gave thanks for it. Give thanks to God for what you do have. And stop talking about what you don't have. Amen. Amen. I can't help but to to just those words that that uh, his Chris's new boss said. Was it as easy as it looked? I, I think so many times we think that God's dream is going to be easy. It's never going to be easy. If you want easy, go to Staples and buy an easy bun. But it's it's not easy. Our point number seven is rebounding in adversity. How do you do that? Rebounding in adversity because we know that Proverbs 24, 10 says, if you faint in the day of adversity, man, your strength is small. And you're not small with God. No, I think you got to keep your eye on the prize, not on the circumstances. Um, Easier said than done. It is. Um, actually, you know, my wife and I, we have prophecies, and sometimes we look at circumstances and we just go home and go, <laughs> and, and we just go over it and over and over it again. No, not this, this. You know, one of the things that his wife had said to him when he was trying to explain to, to her about the dream, she looked at him and said, whatever. You know what? The devil always says, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. I remember a friend of mine was correcting his son and said, you know, Jonathan, you're going to do this. Well, I want to No, you're going to do this. Well, I want to No, you're going to do this. Well, oh, I want to Where are you going to do this? And finally his son conceded and said, whatever. And he went, no, not whatever, this. And that's how we got to do the devil. That's it. You got to. You got to. Last, last, last statements. Yeah, I, I think we forget that, um, that, that adversity isn't a if, it's a win. Right, I think yeah. we forget. We forget, and we forget because because we we work so hard at overcoming that we we love that place yeah. and we love what the end result of that. But but I think you know Chris exemplified uh, there was always a win and there was always a win this adversity struck. And so what I love about seeing uh, Chris is that if you see he returned back to work with the same smile on his face, yeah. with the same pitch yeah. when he was selling uh, stuff over the phones working. Uh, he rebounded in his adversity. Did he Did he believe that he was going to get that job? No. In fact, he, he was wearing a shirt as though he was like, I'm sealing the deal. Come on. It's probably done. But but I, I think we sealed the deal too early. And, and we, we need to uh, really get a hold of what the rebound looks like, what the get back up and dust yourself looks like. Uh, as Paul tells us, to get a new grip, strengthen your weak knees, try it again. Come on. Do it That's again. That's it. That's Can I say it. one thing? Yes. If it's a God dream you're holding, there there is a guarantee. Voila moment. What's a voila moment? Tell them. <laughs> when they said, how would you like to wear here? Wear a shirt tomorrow? Right that's the voila moment that's right there. That's your voila. I call you it know? the aha moment. Aha, okay. Voila. I was voila. 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 Oh, voila. I'm French. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, voila. Okay, okay, okay. Ça, c'est bon. Vous avez vu les français, hein? Okay, okay. Oui, 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 oui. Point number eight. There is always a Rodney in your life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who the heck is Rodney? Sorry about that. Remember when he, the guy was cutting in line? People are going to cut you. Stop being surprised about what people do to you. Stop being surprised that people are going to lie about you, that people are going to uh, betray you, that people are going to despise you underappreciate you, underrate you, 
but the reality is this, is that, man, you're going to have a Rodney. Now, if your name is Rodney, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going off the clip here, okay? But, but we, we all have... I've had plenty of Rodneys in my life. I think I still have a line of them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, you know, the other thing is that you're going to have a Rodney that's going to cut in line and try to keep you from your dream. Yeah. But when you realize your dream and you have influence, Rodney's going to try to ride your coattails. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't yeah. go away. They don't go away. <laughs> They're faithful too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they, they don't know convenience. They don't know they, convenience. They don't know convenience. They, Rodney doesn't have an opportune time. Rodney comes when Rodney wants. <laughs> Rodney does what Rodney wants, right? He doesn't announce himself. No, no. He's like, I'm here. I'm here. But but, but I, I love it. As fast as Rodney came, if you notice, is as fast as Rodney left. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. what if Chris would have known that as fast as Rodney could come, that Rodney would leave? Like, yeah. if we really, really look at that, as fast as these havoc-causing chaos loving situations arise for some of you it may be people but for those things that arise what if we were to look at it like man as fast as you came you're going to leave that's it that's and what if it. we were able to enjoy the process through it and say as fast as you come you're gone and so i'm here, moving so forward. here's what we're going to do and, and never forget this when you hit a, a a rodney moment in your life just say rodney come rodney go yeah. <laughs> okay just like already okay rodney come rodney go that's it's there's, there's a shelf life to every Rodney in life, and, uh, and every trial has an expiration date. And point number nine, and I'm closing with this, and we're going to pray. Number nine, the diligent hand always prospers. Be diligent. Be hardworking. Stop making excuses. Stop settling for security and start reaching significance in your life. Amen. Stop Stop, stop, stop the, the complaining. God doesn't answer complaints. He answers prayer. Pray. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.